Yo guys, what is up? Chris Cook here, back with another reaction video. So in today's video, we are going to react True Pizza Delivery Horror Stories. So, yeah, um, let's jump right into it. I was out doing a delivery one late night. It was probably the longest drive I have ever taken for a pizza delivery. From the pizza place I worked at, it was a 20 minute drive, which isn't too crazy out where I live. Plus, they ordered four large pies, so I figured it was a party and I would get a much bigger tip. Navigating the dirt roads at night was always annoying though. I pulled up to the given address. It was some old, sketchy looking building, literally in the middle of a forest clearing. Ooh. There were no cars parked anywhere or any lights on. I put my car in park and called my boss. I asked him to reread the address at least three times to make sure I typed it in right, but that checked out. I could tell he was in a really bitchy mood, and he told me to at least knock on the door and check it out. He would normally get mad if we took back one pie, but I was afraid of what he would do if I brought back four. I was insanely unnerved, but got out anyway and forced myself to the front door of the building. That's not there was no doorbell, so good. I just knocked really hard. I heard nothing and didn't really expect to hear anything. I was extremely disappointed. Not because nobody answered the door, but because I was realizing that it was all a waste of time and gas. I knocked one more time out of desperation. And then began to hear some kind of rustling noises from inside of the building. I knocked again and yelled that I was the pizza guy. There was silence now. Shut up. I felt a bit more uncomfortable now than before. But before I could turn around... I noticed something at the window. Oh, there was no. someone looking through the window. I couldn't tell if it was a man or a woman. All I noticed were their eyes. Their eyes were open wider than I knew possible, staring intently at me. I was disturbed enough by this and dropped the pizzas and ran back to my car. The shitty thing wouldn't start until turning the key for the third time. I drove off the grass and back onto the dirt road, but I felt the car rocking about, shaking and bumping. Something wasn't right. I didn't make it far from the building before I started hearing a sharp scraping sound coming from outside. There was so much resistance that I couldn't even drive. The car came to a stop. I got out of the car to check what the hell was wrong. A chill ran up my spine as I began to feel like my heart was constantly skipping beats. My tires had been slashed and had completely fallen off the rim. Not just the front, though. All four tires were slashed. I realized what? somebody did this when I was knocking on the door to that building. Instead of running, I got back in the car and locked the doors. I was so close to that building, I could practically see it from where help, I was bro. if it weren't for the trees blocking the view. I dialed 911 and explained everything oh, to the well, operator. Did. She told me the cops would be over as soon as possible and that I need to stay hidden. I asked her if it was advisable to stay in the car or run, and she told me it would be best to stay in the car with the door locked. She asked me to stay on the line with her until the cops arrived. My whole body was shaking. In all directions, yeah, there was nothing that. but dark, seemingly endless forest. I knew it would take forever for the cops to get there. I was not comfortable with sitting in that car so close to whoever did this. The next part, though, is what utterly destroyed me. It still shakes me to this day, and I hope nobody ever has to experience this kind of fear. As I was scanning all the windows, making sure nobody was outside, I looked in the rearview mirror, and there was the same person. The same person I saw at that window. Eyes open wider than ever. I could see now that it was a woman. And I could ever so slightly see a smile begin to spread across her face. 
I opened my door and full on sprinted into the woods, not caring how much noise I made. I ran until I was out of breath, which didn't take long, and I hid behind a giant log on the ground. I tried to cover my loud breathing with my hand. As I waited and waited for what felt like hours until I finally heard sirens in the distance. I gathered up all the stamina I had left to run all the way back in the direction of the dirt road. Eventually, the glowing red and blue lights came into view, and I had never felt better in my life. They were parked in front of my car, investigating with flashlights. I came out yelling at them like a lunatic to help me. I fell to the floor and started to gag, almost throwing up from running so much. They picked me up and began to question me, to which I explained everything to the best of my ability. Mm -hmm. One of the two cars drove over to the building, and the two officers began to search the building. They came back with nothing except for a couple of spiky objects. These objects were exactly the same as the ones used to slash my tires. The cops guessed that it was some kind of sick, demented couple, being that I saw the woman, but unfortunately they were never found, and that still kills me to this day. Yo, that's I obviously scary. quit my job right after that and started working at a local grocery store. I know that I'll never forget seeing that woman at the back of my car. What? Yo. Okay, so let's see here. How about this? What is this? Okay, so we're gonna go to the next, um, which is Hitchhiking Horror Story. So, yeah. Three months after I turned 16 in 2005, I got my first car, a 99 Toyota Camry. On a warm mm -hmm. Saturday night, when my friend Alex invited me over to one of his friend's big parties, I knew I big wouldn't be party. in a condition to drive the Camry home afterward. So, we carpooled with Alex's girlfriend, Brianna. We lived in the countryside of Virginia, meaning less big parties. Meaning when there was a big party, it was a huge deal and everyone would go. We lived about five to ten minutes away from this kid's house. I knew where he lived as I was acquainted with him, but not exactly friends. The whole ride there, we took the same two-lane highway type road through the woods, and this kid's house was actually on this road further down. At certain points on this road, there were a few houses on either side, and then it would just go back to being a long, empty highway again. The house was tiny, like a lot of houses around the area, but the party was held outside anyways, since his closest neighbors were relatively far away, and noise wasn't an issue. Mm, I'll good. skip most of the party up until the point that Brianna, who was supposed to be our designated driver, had to suddenly leave for a small family emergency. Alex said it was fine and that we'd find a ride home. Well, fast forward another few hours and another few drinks, and I could barely even walk straight. I checked my watch, and it was like 2 in the morning. I figured it was time to go. I started looking for Alex, but I couldn't find him anywhere. In fact, it seemed like everybody I knew had already left. I could barely even think straight, but I was still furious at the fact that Alex could have actually left without me. I asked to use the party host's phone and dialed Alex's home number. After two tries, I gave up and then realized I shouldn't wake his family up. So, literally not knowing what else to do, I dizzily stepped out onto the road and began walking back home. What? I knew this walk this would take is. anywhere from half an hour to an hour in my condition. Maybe after 15 minutes of walking down the road, the slight shine of car headlights on the road was fading in from behind me. Jumping for joy inside, I lifted up my arm and stuck out my thumb. As the car neared, it slowed down and came to a stop right next to me. The man driving the 98 Ford Explorer rolled down the window and asked where you headed. I told him my house was just down the road and beyond a right turn, probably slurring my words beyond comprehension. He chuckled and told me to hop in. I thanked him and joyously hopped into the truck. I was exhausted, and I remember completely disregarding things the guy was asking me because I was so close to just passing out. And that's what happened. The memories of being in that truck turned to a fog as I'm sure I passed out. The next thing I remember, I woke up still in the moving truck. The guy looked at me and left, but didn't say anything. 
I looked around and realized the road we were on wasn't familiar. I nervously asked, uh, where are we going? He then said, so what were you doing out this late anyway? As the man answered my very straightforward question with another irrelevant question, the sobering reality of the situation hit me. Uh, you can, you can let me out anywhere, I told the man. The man responded with a firm no. I felt like throwing up as he said that. No, I really actually felt like I was going to throw up. I started to gag as I felt more and more nauseous by the second. The man took his eyes off the road to look at me, and that's when I thought of the perfect distraction. I turned in his direction as I continued to gag, and he started to kind of lean away and slow down the car. Thankfully, I drank as much as I did because I finally threw up and made a point of doing it all over the man's lap. The man yelled in frustration and stopped the car, and that's when I took it upon myself to run for my Yo, life into the so woods smart. and duck behind a few bushes. The man came following into the woods with a flashlight, and on two separate occasions, he shined the light straight over me without noticing. Eventually, I heard his footsteps walk even further into the woods past me. That was when I ran back to his truck, but unfortunately, he was smart enough to lock it. By some miracle, I saw another car approaching in the distance, and I ran out into the middle of the street, waving my arms like a lunatic. The car tried to avoid me, but I wouldn't let it. They were forced to stop, and I yelled at them to help me before they came back. Once I told them that I was kidnapped by the man who was driving that Ford Explorer, the driver agreed to give me a lift. Not to the police station or anything, but to my house. I made it back safely, where I couldn't thank the driver enough. I immediately woke up my parents and told them. My dad wanted to know if I got his tag number, and then I felt like punching myself in the face. I failed to get the simplest information from the guy that would have allowed me to actually properly report him. All I knew was that he drove a faded blue 99 Ford Explorer. I made sure to give Alex a piece of my mind, and part of me always held a grudge against him ever since just for abandoning me at a party without telling me. I haven't seen him in four years now, however, and this was actually the first time I even thought about this incident for almost a year now. As time goes on, even the worst of memories may start to fade, but after writing this to share with the internet, it's once again fresh in my mind. So is that it? Okay, guys. So, yeah, guys, so thank you guys so much for watching this video. Um, I really hope you like, um, this, um, an reaction video. So, yeah, guys, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you like and subscribe, and I will see you all in the next video. See ya!